hello guys welcome back to the show in today's video i'm going to show you the best way to structure express.js applications so that when you start building complex projects you don't run into any issues if you're watching this video then i assume you already know what express.js is but just in case you don't know express is a web application framework for node.js so before you can use express.js on your own local machine what you need to do is to have node.js installed on your machine and the best way to install node.js is to go to google and type in node.js click here and then you can install the latest version of node.js on your local machine now once node.js has been installed in the machine you can go into the terminal and then type in npm in it that's why like so now what this does is that it creates a package.json so i have a packet.json which is a package that will manage all the dependencies that i need for the application that i am going to build in this case i'm going to build a simple express application but whilst doing so we will learn how to structure express applications for big projects now we have visual studio code opened and you can, as you can see in the packet.json i do not have anything in here so I now need to install Express using NPM. If you go onto the NPM website, you can click on this, copy it, go to the terminal, paste it here, and then do dash dash save. This will install Express as a dependency for your application. As you can see over here, I do have Express now. Now that Express has been installed, I can go ahead and create a simple application and show you guys how people usually create a express application without structuring it properly so we learn how to do it and we learn how to do it the proper way so when building an express application all you need is to create an app.js file so inside of the terminal i'll clear this and i'll do touch app.js creating an app.js over here i'll require express now i need to create an instance of express and i'll call that instance app so I'll say app express like so. And the next thing I'm going to do is to create a simple endpoint. So I'll say app.get. If anyone goes to the slash root request response rest.send for now is hello. So what I'm saying is that if anyone goes to the slash URL, what I want you to do is to send the person hello. And now I need to give it a port and then let the application listen on that port. So I can say that const port. Now what people usually do is that they have an e.env file in which they store their environment variables. So what I'm going to do is to do it the proper way. So I'm going to create a .env file and inside of the .env file, I will store in my environment variable for the port and then we can proceed to structure the application properly. So what I'm going to do is to come over here and do touch.env like so. And then I'll say port and I'll set port to 3000. Now to use .env with express.js, you need to install another NPM package to load the env config or to load the things in your env into your application. So I'll go ahead and install the .env npm package. So I'll come over here and then I'll type in dot env like so. I'll click on this and I'll install that. So I'll do dot env dash dash save. Now dot env is saved. Once you've installed, you need to require dot env dot config. So I'm gonna copy this, come to the app.js, and basically what I'm gonna do is to paste this here and say require dot env dot config. Now to use the .env, what I'm going to say is that process.env. And whatever name I give it here must be the name that I have over here. All right. So I'll take port and I'll say port or I'll set one to port 3000. Then I need to tell the application to listen to this port. So I'll say app.listen. I'll pass it the port. Then I'll pass it the function. And what this is going to do is basically say that console.log listening on ports and the port that i would like to listen to is port 3000 so i would just say port like so so it's basically listening on port 3000 and that's it now if i start the application if i say node app.js it says listening on port 3000 so i'm gonna go on localhost 3000 it says hello 
but watch what happens when I try to change it when I try to change the text that I'm sending when someone goes to the slash URL so if I go back to the application over here and I say hello Chris and I save it nothing changes over here all right which means that Express is not taking into consideration the changes that I make to the application. To resolve this issue, you need another dependency called NodeMon. So I'll go ahead and install NodeMon. So we need NodeMon to be able to capture the changes that we make in the application so that we don't have to always restart the application to make our changes go to the browser. All right. So I'm going to copy this, go back to the terminal and then do npm install dash dash save NodeMon. Now we've got NodeMon installed, we need to tell the application to use NodeMon. So I'm going to go into the packet.json and inside of the packet.json, what I'm going to do is basically say that whenever I run dev, what I want you to do is to do NodeMon app.js. So whenever I run npm run dev, I will use this script to run the application. If I go back to the terminal and say that npm run dev, as you can see, I'm now using NodeMon to run the application. Okay, now let me make a change and see what happens. It says, hello, Chris. Now, if I come over here and say, hey, and I refresh, it says, hello, Chris, hey. So we've already set up a simple application, and this is how people usually structure Express application, but we can do better. The way we're gonna do this is basically by going to the terminal, I'll turn off the server, and I'll say mkdir, what I'm going to create is that I'm going to create a views, a roots, and a controller. So I'll say views, roots, and then controllers. If I go back to Visual Studio Code, I have controllers, roots, and views. So the way we're going to do this is basically by going into the controllers, and I'm going to create something called a controller called hello.js. All right. So I'll say hello.js. Instead of this hello.js controller, what I'm going to say, is that a sports dot hello which will basically be so basically what i'm going to do in this controller is that i'm going to copy this then i'll paste this right here but i will not need this anymore okay and i will not need this anymore so basically i do have just the function so if you come back here as you saw we've got the get method takes in two parameters it takes in the path and it takes in this function which basically returns the response. So right now what I'm doing is that I'm only passing in the function without the root, right? Without the path. So I can say that this is just a function that returns hello Chris. Hey. So I need to export this function. I'm gonna say exports.hello will be this. So I'll say exports.hello is a function that returns hello Chris. Hey. Okay? So this is what the controller will be. Alright? So as you can already guess, these roots will be what will send the user and call this function. So basically, what we're going to do is to go into the roots and create a root for hello.js. So I can say hello.js. Now, in order to make this happen, we need to use the express routers. So what we're going to use the express routers for is to use it to handle which function to call when the person goes to a certain route. So I'll go back to the application and create a constant called express, which is equal to require express. Now that I have express, what I'm going to do is to create the router. Okay. So I'll say router will be express dot router. And the last thing I'm going to do is to require this controller, all right? This hello controller, hello.js controller. So I'm going to say hello will be require not in this file. So outside of this file, if you go into the controllers, hello, then I can say the router dot get slash. What I want you to do is to call the hello dot hello. Okay. So as you saw over here, when someone went to the slash root, we call this function. Okay. So it's the same thing that I'm doing over here. I'm saying that when someone goes to the slash root, I want you to call the hello dot hello function, which is basically this function over here. So you imagine your head that when I call it, I just pass in everything over here. This will get passed in like that over here. Just like that. That is basically what is happening. Now I need to basically export this router so I can say module 
dot s port is equal to router like so so the next thing i need to do is to come back to my application and get rid of this i do not need this anymore because i'm now using the proper way of structuring express application so i do not need that anymore how do you now make a request to the slash url well what you can do is to use the use method that express provides so i'm gonna say the app the use if someone goes to slash what i would like you to do is to handle or give everything to the roots okay when someone goes to slash call the roots hello.js so i can say require roots because it's roots slash hello and i can get rid of this and that's it so if i now go to the application and i start the server i think i made a mistake Okay, I forgot to put this in a string. I save it, then I refresh. And I think the error was saying that I have this here, so I remove this and everything should work now. So if I now go over here, you should now see hello Chris Hey. So that is how I like to structure Express application for big projects. Now, if you are building complex applications, you're not going to send hello Chris Hey. You might want to use templates, all right? You might want to write HTML. The way you can add HTML or send HTML instead of test is basically by using or installing EJX. So I will install the EJX dependency by doing, I'll copy this, go to the terminal, turn off the server, paste this here, dash dash save. Okay, I now have EJS installed. So I need to tell the application that I would like to use EJS as my view engine. So I will come over here and I'll say app.set view engine and I'll set the view engine to EJS. So now the view engine is set to EJS. So I can come over here and then say hello.ejs. And instead of my EJS file, I can write something like hello friends, make sure to subscribe. So now if I go into my application, and I run the server, I should now see, okay. So I'm seeing hello, Chris, hey, because again, instead of my controller, I'm just sending hello, Chris, hey. And I need to render the view template. So I can say that render, instead of send, what do I want to render? I want to render hello. So if I come over here, it says, hello friends, make sure to subscribe i hope you now understand the best way to structure express application so basically all that we did was that we created an app.js file instead of that app.js file we required express we created an instance of express and then we are telling express over here if anyone goes to the slash roots what i want you to do is to require the hello roots so if i go to slash express goes into this hello roots and then it says that, okay, if someone goes to slash, what I want you to do is to call the hello dot hello function. So it goes into the controller and then it calls this function, which then renders this view template that I have over here. That's it for now. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video.